Greetings, I'm Off The World, and I am thrilled to guide you on a journey through the breathtaking, diverse landscapes of Ethiopia, a country whose name and history carry profound significance. The term Ethiopia is derived from the ancient Greek phrase athiops, which means burnt face. This was a term inspired by the darker skin tone of its residents, hence they were referred to as Ethiopians. Beyond this, the word Ethiopia is believed to come from the Akkadian words eth, labor, and yop, meaning resemblance and also yellow gold. This interpretation is twofold. First, it pays homage to the hardworking nature of its people, and secondly, it signifies the country's rich resources of yellow gold, a treasure that has its roots tracing back to the reign of its first king, Menelik, who was the son of the famous Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. Now that we've answered the riddle of the week, which places home to the awe-inspiring Blue Nile, the birthplace of coffee, and operates on a unique sun cycle, yes, it is indeed Ethiopia. Before we delve deeper into our exploration, let's take a moment to understand the essence of its flag, the Ethiopian flag, a vibrant tricolor yellow and red, each color holding a profound meaning. The green signifies the land, the yellow represents peace, harmony, and the country's rich reserves of gold, while the red marks strength and bravery. In the center is a blue emblem symbolizing both unity and the diversity of the nation. This flag with its powerful symbolism was first unfurled in its present form in 1996. Now let's return to our journey. Ethiopia, located in the Horn of East Africa, is a testament to the enduring spirit of nature and humanity. As we traverse the country, we will dive into its rich linguistic fabric. With a range of dialects from Amharic to Tigrinya, Oromo to Sidamo and Somali, the languages mirror the diversity of the landscapes and invite you immerse yourself in its richness. A destination where history lives and stories are woven into its culture, Ethiopia holds boundless potential to captivate and inspire you. So buckle up. We're about to embark on an exhilarating journey to unravel Ethiopia's rich tapestry of history and culture. Get ready for an adventure like no other. Travel back to the ancient times when Ethiopia earned its title as the cradle of humankind. Imagine an era when the earth was still young and the first flickers of human consciousness were ignited. The terrain we now identify as Ethiopia served as a cradle for these early humans, a fertile playground where they took their inaugural steps towards what we now comprehend as humanity. One of the most renowned remnants of this epoch is a fossil lovingly christened Lucy. Discovered within the arid, rugged backdrops of Hadda, Lucy, or Australopithecus afarensis, as scientists prefer, dates back more than three million years. She stands as a phenomenal testament to our early ancestors, her skeletal remains narrating a tale of evolution and survival against all odds. Lucy's discovery was a defining moment, illuminating our understanding of human evolution. It was a eureka moment, a tangible connection to our past, a past that originated in the heart of Ethiopia. The revelation that Ethiopia was not just the genesis of its own people, but of all humankind was profound. But let's hit the fast forward button from the dawn of humankind to a time of grandeur and power, to the reign of the Aksumite Empire. Thriving from the 1st to the 10th century AD, the Aksumite Empire was one of the oldest African empires, a titan of commerce and culture. They inscribed an indelible mark on the landscape, their legacy etched in stone in the form of towering obelisks. These obelisks, or stele, were more than just stones. They were symbols of power and faith reaching skywards from the earth below. The most famous among them is the obelisk of Aksum, a monolithic mammoth stretching over 70 feet into the sky. Not simply a symbol, the obelisk was a testament to the Aksumite civilization's architectural prowess, serving as a monumental tombstone for their deceased rulers. The Aksumite Empire was also a beacon of Christianity. The empire, converted in the 4th century AD, was one of the earliest nations to accept the faith, demonstrating its open-mindedness and readiness to embrace new ideas. This amalgamation of faith and power is a recurring motif in Ethiopia's history, a storyline that threads through the centuries from the Aksumites to the Solomonic dynasty and beyond. 
From ancient empires to a beacon of Christianity, Ethiopia's history is as diverse as its landscapes, a nation of rugged mountains and expansive plains of ancient faiths and modern ambitions. Ethiopia is a terrain that has witnessed the birth of humankind and the ascent and descent of empires. It's a land that has experienced the best and the worst of humanity, a land that continues to influence the direction of history. And it's a land that beckons us to explore, to unearth, to comprehend. From antiquity to the present, every stone, every mountain, every river in Ethiopia has a tale to narrate. And as we voyage through this terrain, we become a part of that story, a story that commenced millions of years ago with a single fossil named Lucy. From ancient empires to a beacon of Christianity, Ethiopia's history is as diverse as its landscapes. Step into medieval Ethiopia, a time of dynastic rule, religious fervor, and grand architecture. This period bore witness to the reign of the Solomonic dynasty, a line of rulers who claimed their lineage all the way back to the biblical King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. This claim, whether based on fact or legend, held a powerful sway over the Ethiopian populace and helped to cement the dynasty's authority for centuries. The Solomonic dynasty, established in the 13th century, marked a golden age in Ethiopian history. It was a period of prosperity, cultural renaissance, and religious devotion. The dynasty's rulers were considered by many to be the rightful kings of Ethiopia given their alleged descent from King Solomon, a figure revered in Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity. One of the most noteworthy monarchs of this dynasty was King Lalibela, a man whose name still echoes through the ages. It was under his reign that the remarkable rock-hewn churches of Lalibela were constructed. These architectural marvels, chiseled from solid rock, were not just feats of engineering, but also expressions of deep spiritual devotion. Today, they stand as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a testament to the ingenuity and faith of the Ethiopian people during the Solomonic era. The construction of these churches was said to have been guided by divine inspiration. King Lalibela, having witnessed the decline of Jerusalem during his pilgrimage, sought to build a new Jerusalem in his homeland. With a vision from God, he embarked on this ambitious project leading to the creation of 11 monolithic churches that still serve as places of worship and pilgrimage today. But like all empires, the Solomonic dynasty had its ebbs and flows. Despite periods of decline and upheaval, the lineage of the Solomonic kings remained unbroken and their influence on Ethiopian culture and religion was profound. Their legacy can be seen in the rich tapestry of Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity in the holy manuscripts that were written, in the languages that were spoken, and in the traditions that were passed down from generation to generation. As we leave the medieval period behind, we see the Solomonic dynasty wane. Power struggles, external threats and societal changes led to a decline in the dynasty's influence. Yet the dynasty's impact on Ethiopia's identity was indelible. It was a time of kings and queens, of faith and fervor, of monumental architecture that still stands as a testament to a bygone era. As the Solomonic dynasty waned, a new era dawned, one of conflict, resilience and transformation. But that, dear listeners, is a story for another time. Explore the resilience of Ethiopia as it braved the scramble for Africa, a time of heightened European colonization. As the 19th century drew to its end, a colonial frenzy engulfed Europe, leading to the era now known as the Scramble for Africa. Amidst this turbulent period, one nation remained unyielding, resisting the incessant tide of European expansion, Ethiopia. Our tale takes us to a pivotal moment in history, the Battle of Adua, which occurred on the 1st of March, 1896. This was a face-off between the forces of Ethiopia under the capable leadership of Emperor Menelik II and the Italian army under General Oreste Baratieri. This wasn't merely a territorial dispute. It was an existential fight for a nation, a struggle to preserve independence and sovereignty. Menelik II, a thoughtful leader, grasped the profound implications of this battle. He rallied his people, forming an army composed of various regional forces, signifying the unity of purpose that bound the nation. The Italians, however, led by General Oreste Baratieri, anticipated an effortless victory, underestimating the tenacity of the Ethiopian forces. As the first light of the 1st of March, 1896, unfolded over the rugged landscapes of Adua, the two forces collided in one of the most significant battles in African history, 
The Ethiopians, fueled by determination and the will to guard their homeland, fought fiercely. After a day of intense combat, the Ethiopian forces emerged victorious, sending shockwaves across Europe. This victory was more than a military success. It was a beacon of hope for the entirety of Africa. Ethiopia demonstrated that resistance to European colonization was not only feasible, but could also be triumphant. The Battle of Adua was a declaration, a powerful assertion that Ethiopia, and by extension Africa, was not a continent to be taken lightly. Emperor Menelik II, in the aftermath of the battle, emerged as an icon of African resistance. His leadership, coupled with the Ethiopians' bravery, successfully pushed back the Italian invaders, securing Ethiopia's independence during a time when much of Africa was succumbing to European control. The Battle of Adua was more than just a defense of territorial integrity. It was a bold statement of Ethiopian identity, a resonant proclamation of the nation's resilience and determination to remain independent. This battle, fought over a century ago, continues to resonate in the hearts and minds of Ethiopians today, serving as a source of national pride and a symbol of the country's enduring spirit. As the century dawned, Ethiopia emerged as a symbol of African resistance against colonialism. The Battle of Adua had securely marked Ethiopia's position in history, a testament to the tenacity, courage and unwavering spirit of a nation that refused to succumb to external pressures. A nation that stood tall, its spirit unbroken, its resolve unyielding. And that, dear listeners, is the story of Ethiopia's resilience against colonialism, a narration of courage, determination and unflinching spirit. Discover the tumultuous 20th century marked by the reign of Emperor Haile Selassie and the oppressive Derg regime. Our story begins in the heart of the 20th century when Haile Selassie ascended to the throne in 1930. Known as the Lion of Judah, Selassie sought to modernize Ethiopia, dragging it out from the shadows of feudalism and into the light of the modern world. His reign was characterized by efforts to centralize power, reform the legal system and improve education and infrastructure. However, Selassie's reign was not without controversy. While he was hailed as a messianic figure by the Rastafari movement in Jamaica, his rule at home was marked by autocracy and allegations of human rights abuses. His handling of the devastating famine in the early 1970s in particular drew widespread criticism. The emperor's inability or perhaps unwillingness to effectively respond to the crisis led to widespread discontent. In the midst of this turmoil, the Derg, a military junta, seized the opportunity to overthrow Selassie in 1974. Thus began a period known as the Red Terror, characterized by brutal repression, mass executions, and widespread human rights abuses. The Derg regime, led by the iron-fisted Mengistu Haile Mariam, sought to transform Ethiopia into a socialist state, nationalizing industries and collectivizing agriculture. This period also saw the devastating Ethiopian civil war, a conflict that would last for over a decade and result in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. The Derg's attempts to suppress various separatist movements only fueled the flames of rebellion, leading to a protracted and bloody conflict that would ravage the country. The Derg regime finally came to an end in 1991, when it was overthrown by a coalition of rebel groups known as the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. This marked the end of a dark and violent chapter in Ethiopia's history, one that left deep scars on the nation's psyche. The 20th century left an indelible mark on Ethiopia, shaping its present and future. The legacies of Haile Selassie and the Derg regime continue to resonate today, influencing the country's political, social and economic landscapes. Through the highs and lows of the 20th century, Ethiopia emerged as a nation forever changed, its history a testament to resilience and the indomitable spirit of its people. Explore modern Ethiopia, a nation striving for progress amidst challenges. As we venture into the present day, Ethiopia stands as a country straddling the tightrope of change and tradition, a balancing act that is no small feat. The nation's government, under the leadership of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed since 2018, has been making waves with its ongoing political and economic reforms. This new era of leadership has brought with it a renewed sense of hope and optimism for many Ethiopians. A key focus of these reforms has been on opening up the country's economy, 
For years, the Ethiopian economy has been tightly controlled by the state, but there's a shift happening. The government is now actively encouraging foreign investment and privatization in key sectors. This move is seen by many as a vital step towards modernizing Ethiopia's economy and fostering prosperity. However, the road to progress is not without its bumps. The country still grapples with significant challenges, including ethnic tensions, poverty, and issues of infrastructure. These struggles are real and they are profound, but they are not the whole story of Ethiopia. Far from it. Amidst these challenges, Ethiopia's rich cultural heritage continues to shine brightly. Ethiopian music, with its unique blend of traditional and modern styles, is a testament to the country's resilience and creativity. It's a music that speaks to the soul, weaving tales of love, hardship and triumph against the odds. Let's not forget the country's culinary scene either. Ethiopian cuisine, with its vibrant mix of flavors and textures, offers a feast for the senses. From the spicy stews known as wats to the sourdough flatbread injera, every meal tells a story of the country's diverse cultural influences. And then there's coffee, or should we say buna, as it's known locally. Ethiopia is, after all, the birthplace of coffee. The country's high altitude, fertile lands are perfect for growing the Arabica coffee beans that are so loved worldwide. The traditional Ethiopian coffee ceremony is a testament to the country's deep-rooted coffee culture and a symbol of its warm hospitality. Through all its struggles and triumphs, Ethiopia remains a country rich in culture and history. The nation's journey for progress is intertwined with its deep respect for tradition, creating a unique blend of old and new. It's a country that's not afraid to look towards the future while still holding on to the lessons of its past. As Ethiopia forges its path forward, it carries with it the weight and wisdom of its past. And with that, we can only watch, wait and hope that the land of origins will continue to rise, evolve and surprise us in the years to come. You've journeyed through time and traversed the diverse landscapes of Ethiopia with us. From the birthplace of humankind to the towering heights of the Ethiopian highlands, we've walked together through the annals of history, uncovering tales of courage, resilience and a cultural heritage that stands as a testament to this nation's indomitable spirit. We've entered the royal courts of the Solomonic dynasty, witnessed the Battle of Adua's heroic stand, and felt the tumultuous waves of change under the reign of Haile Selassie and the Derg regime. We've seen how struggles can shape a nation, but also how hope can ignite the path towards a brighter future. Together, we've delved into the national language of Amharic, explored the nuances of its dialects, and discovered the symbolic significance of Ethiopia's emblem. The landmarks we've visited from the rock-hewn churches of Lalibela to the Simeon Mountains have painted a vivid picture of a country steeped in a rich tapestry of history and natural beauty. And let's not forget the current government and the current ruler who carry on the legacy of this proud nation navigating the ever-changing landscape of the modern world. We're grateful for your time and attention for every minute you've spent with us is a testament to your curiosity and love for learning. We've covered a lot of ground, but there's so much more to explore, so many more stories to tell, so many more corners of the world to uncover. If you've come this far, you've clearly enjoyed the ride, so why not subscribe? It's just one click away, and you'll join us on more exciting adventures through history and culture. Until next time, stay curious.